Our text this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our scripture reading today is for anyone who has ever suffered, for anyone who wonders why God has not stepped in to make their situation right, and it's for anyone who is tired of waiting for an answer. This passage speaks to us because it spoke to the people of Israel who were wondering where God was in their exile. Isaiah reassures the people and us by saying, God is almighty, the creator of everything, the eternal one who never gets tired, who has no limitations, and who understands everything. God is not ignoring you. But God is wholly other. God is completely different from us and does not work on our timetable. And we can depend on this. God is at work in our lives. You can depend on God. The difficulty we have with God comes about when we try to understand God on our own terms. Everything and everyone that we know has a beginning and an end. We know that things wear down, things break down. We human beings become exhausted. Thankfully, Unlike us, God is not part of creation. God is the creator and as such, he's outside of creation. God never wears out, never becomes exhausted. His strength is tireless and his wisdom is immeasurable. God can do whatever he wants, but in his own time. If we aren't getting the answer we want in the time we want, the delay is not because God isn't acting. That's what Isaiah was trying to tell his people. And then he tells them what to do. They must wait on the Lord. But we don't like to wait, do we? Especially in these times of instantaneous answers. Just Google it or ask Siri or Alexa and there's your answer. No, we don't like to wait. We want everything fast and we want it now. But this isn't what Isaiah was talking about when he said to wait, which is good news for us. Most of the time we hear the translation of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 as, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Some of the more current translations state hope, those who hope in the Lord while others use the word trust, those who trust in the Lord. All of these words are encompassed in the Hebrew word. When the Bible says we are to wait on the Lord, it means complete 
dependence on God and a willingness to allow him to decide the terms. To wait on God is to admit that we have no other help. We cannot have help in others or ourselves. We're helpless. We need God to act. To wait on God is to say that we have full confidence that God will act on our behalf, either now or sometime in God's time. To wait is to say, okay, Lord, I trust in you, and I trust that even if I can't see it, I know that you are working in my life for the good. To wait on the Lord means to let God be God in your life. It means allowing Jesus to be Lord in your life and of your life. For those who do this, for those who wait on the Lord, who put their hope and trust in the Lord, Isaiah tells us we gain something great. It's my favorite part of this passage where Isaiah says, the Lord will renew your strength. Again, the Hebrew has a deeper meaning than our English. Let me explain it this way. Anytime you buy a major appliance or electrical device these days, they ask you if you want to purchase the extended warranty. When they first started doing this a decade or more ago, I was angry. Why should I pay more money on top of the original price? Shouldn't the manufacturer make something without defects? Shouldn't they protect their product? But in time, I began to see the wisdom of this, especially after I had a DVD player malfunction. I packed it up and took the receipt in hand and went back to the store, and I fully expected them to say, well, we'll send it out for repairs. It'll be four weeks or so. But the salesman said, wait here. He took my DVD player away, and when he came back, he had a brand new one for me. I could barely believe it. He exchanged my broken down DVD player for a brand new one, still in the box, no less. That's a wonderful exchange. And this is what Isaiah is speaking of when he writes, those who wait, those who hope, those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. The original Hebrew translated properly says, those who wait on the Lord will replace their strength. Isaiah is telling us we can replace our worn out strength with God's strength, which is inexhaustible. God never tires out. When we wait on the Lord, when we trust in God, he exchanges our failed strength for his everlasting strength. He exchanges our worn out, useless, empty, fallible human strength for his incomparable, inexhaustible, perfect strength. His strength never runs out. It never fails. Our own frantic efforts will get us nowhere, but if we turn to God, then he will replace our worn out strength with his new strength. That's how good our God is. He exchanges our emptiness and fills us with his goodness. When we trust in the Lord, we will have the strength of the Lord that never fails. And Isaiah says, we will not be tired or weary, but we will fly up on wings like eagles. Have you ever seen an eagle soaring overhead? They appear to do it so effortlessly. Eagles have been seen to be soaring almost motionless in hurricane force winds. As it turns out, the turbulent winds have great lifting power, which causes the eagle to fly higher and higher. The eagle finds greater lift power in the updrafts of turbulent wings and uses less effort to fly higher because he rides the winds. He doesn't need to flutter his wings like other birds, and the wind allows the eagle to stay higher for longer periods of time. When you see an eagle flying in a spiral pattern, he's trying to find the updraft. So too, we must seek out God through prayer, scripture, and worship. When we wait on the Lord, his Holy Spirit will provide the wind beneath our wings, and we can discover that in turbulent times, 
we soar even higher than we ever thought possible because God's power lifts us and sustains us. Now, in, in order to make this lifting power, to experience this power, first we must fly. Like little eaglets, some of us have never flown. Many are comfortable in the nest, allowing God to bring the food to us and never daring to step out in faith. But we only learn to fly spiritually when we leave the nest. I found a neat sermon illustration on this. So good, in fact, it's been used by a lot of preachers. And it talked about how the mother eagle will have the eaglets climb on her back and she'll soar high into the sky and then shake the little one loose so he'll learn to fly on his own. And the mother will stay close to the young, ensuring he doesn't fall. And if he's in danger of falling, she scoops him up and takes him to safety. Such a nice analogy, I thought, of how God cares for us. However, that didn't ring true with what I've learned by watching a live stream of an eagle's nest in Decorah, Iowa. If you go to the website for Decorah Eagles, you can watch the eggs in the nest, see the e eaglets hatch, watch them be fed and nurtured by their parents, and then watch them as they learn to fly. I've tuned in every now and then over the years, and not once did the mother come and take the fledglings on her back. In fact, it's up to the eaglets to step out of the nest, to take the risk, to learn to fly. They do this gradually by exercising in the nest. They start by flapping their little wings, and they build up their muscles, and then they'll spread their wings to test how the wind will carry them. They jump up and down in the nest with their wings open. And in time, they will fly to a branch that's very close to the nest, and then they'll fly back again. Finally, one day they take that proverbial leap of faith and they leave the nest. This is the reality of life. God is there beside us always, but God will not do the flying for us. We have to step out in faith for ourselves. Only then will we learn and grow as we strengthen our muscles of faith. And it's only when we do take the leap that we will find that God does indeed raise us up. God provides the wind beneath our wings so that we can soar. Sadly, some folks never leave the nest and learn to grow in their faith. And there's the opposite problem of never learning to soar. So many of us try to do it all on our own. We flap our wings vigorously, working very hard at our faith, trying to earn our way to heaven. But that's not what grace is about. We can take a lesson from the eagle who soars on the thermal currents of air. The eagle spreads her wings and the wind carries her to new heights. Then she glides down to catch another upward thermal. The eagle doesn't expend energy because it doesn't have to flap its wings when it soars. So often, we're too busy flapping our wings, working at our faith, working so hard that we don't rely on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord, those who trust and hope in the Lord, they will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired, walk and not be weary. Our God is eternal. Our God is wise. Our God is good and our God has inexhaustible strength. When we feel like we're flapping around in life, wearing ourselves out, then that's a sign that we're trying to fly on our own. That's when we need to remember that God is with us. God has always been with us, and he's waiting for us to rely on him. If we have no relationship with God, then truly there is no hope for us, for our weary wings will fail us in time, and we will come crashing down. Thankfully, when we wait on the Lord, when we depend on Him, when we trust in Him, then we can ride on the wind of the Holy Spirit and exchange our weary strength for God's eternal strength. Only when we place our confidence in God can God step in and exchange our failing strength for his unfailing energy. He gives strength to the weary 
And to those who lack might, he multiplies strength. That is the promise that God gives to those who wait upon him in all the circumstances of life. Every day we need to be exchanging our strength for God's inexhaustible strength. Whenever we find ourselves tiring out, we need to realize that we're working on our own strength instead of relying on God. So let us then wait on the Lord. Let us trust in God and allow God to be truly Lord of our life. When we do this, we can exchange our worn out, empty strength for His, and His eternal strength never fails. We will have the Holy Spirit undergirding us with God's inexhaustible strength. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. We will soar like eagles on the high winds, soaring to new heights in God's love. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.